After having spent a number of videos on assembly programming, let's finally shift gears and let's move on to chapter 3 which is all about computer arithmetic. So I'll start with uh, the basics and how to represent numbers and then we'll move on to algorithms for doing binary addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So by now everyone has seen a binary number and how it is represented and it's worth reminding everybody what a binary number actually stands for. So if I give you a 32-bit string of zeros and ones, let's denote the bit on the right as the least significant bit, the bit on the left as the most significant bit, and you'll see that any number really stands for the magnitude represented by this equation here. The least significant bit, in this case it's a 1, that essentially means that that last bit is contributing 1 times 2 to the power 0. The next bit is contributing 1 times 2 to the power 1, the next bit is contributing 1 times 2 to the power 2. This bit is contributing 0 times 2 to the power 3, 0 times 2 to the power 4, and so on. And ultimately, the most significant bit in this case is contributing 0 times 2 to the power 31. Okay, so you add up all of these quantities, and that gives you the value represented by this large binary number. So what is the largest number that I can represent? Right. So if all the bits are 1, that essentially gives me you know, 1 times 2 to the 0 all the way up to 1 times 2 to the power 31. That gives me a value of 2 to the power 32 minus 1. And the smallest number in this case would be 0. Okay, So in general, this is referred to as an unsigned representation because I've not yet talked about the convention to represent a negative number. Okay, Of course, you can put in a sign up front that says this is minus whatever. But again, a sign in binary has to be represented with a 0 or a 1, right? So essentially all I have at my disposal are these 32 bits and I need them to represent both positive and negative numbers. In this example over here or with this equation over here, all I can do is represent positive numbers. So if this is the representation that I'm assuming, then it means that I can only represent positive numbers starting from 0 and going all the way up to 2 to the power 32 minus 1. Okay, so this is referred to as the unsigned representation. Now let's just talk about whether there were some alternative formats as well. Okay, so we've seen the ASCII representation. So when we were talking about assembly programming and when we talked about how to deal with characters, we said that a character can be represented with an ASCII code. So with an 8-bit string, I can represent numbers between 0 and 255 and we had seen the table that each number in this range represents a different character. Okay, So if I'm trying to represent the decimal number 1 billion, I have two options, at least in, in, in what we've discussed so far, there are two options. I can represent it in binary with this representation on the previous slide or I can represent it in ASCII saying that you know every character can be represented with one of these 8-bit strings and that's that's an alternative way to represent a number 1 billion. Okay, so let's just compare the two. So in terms of storage overhead, if I look at this number 1 billion and try to represent each character, each decimal character, with its ASCII code, how much storage would that take? So this bit over here would need an 8-bit ASCII code, and likewise this one would need an 8-bit ASCII code, right? And in the number 1 billion, I have 10 characters, and so I would totally need 80 bits to represent this number in ASCII. If I'm trying to represent this number in binary, then again I need a large number of bits. And let's just see what 2 to the power 30 can give us. Right? So we know that 2 to the power 10 is roughly 1000. To be precise, it's 1024, but let's just say it's, it's 1000. So 2 to the power 30 is 1000 times 1000 times 1000, right? and that's basically 1 billion. So to some extent, if I had 30 binary bits, I can represent numbers up to 2 to the power 30 minus 1, and that is large enough to accommodate the number 1 billion. Right? So with binary, all I need are 30 bits to represent the number 1 billion. So you can see that binary is clearly more space efficient than using an ASCII representation. Okay, so you know this kind of seems obvious at first and obvious in retrospect as well, but it's just worth spelling out. Uh, it's also pretty evident that if I give you the ASCII representation of the number 1 billion, you have to do various conversions before you can start doing math 
on ASCII representations of, of, of decimal numbers. Whereas with, with a binary representation, as you'll soon see, uh, the math becomes much simpler. So I'm just spelling out those details here and let's quickly get to the math. Okay, but before I do that, let me talk about how to represent negative numbers. Okay, so we already saw that the unsigned representation with 32 bits can represent numbers 0 to 2 to the power 32 minus 1. Now let's see what my options are if I want to use those same 32 bits to represent both positive and negative numbers. Okay, so I'm going to start enumerating all of these numbers starting with the smallest number and then going to a number that has all ones in it. Okay, so I start with zero, right, which is all zeros. I'm showing you the decimal representation of that number here and the binary representation of the number on the left. Okay, then I go on to one, two, three, four, and so on. And then I stop at two to the power 31 minus one, okay, not 32 minus one. I stop at two to the power 31 minus one. And that number is a string of ones but preceded by a zero. Okay, and I'm going to say that, you know, essentially this is half the range. Okay, so this quantity of numbers is roughly half the range that is available to me. So maybe that's enough in terms of representing positive numbers. From this point on, I should start representing negative numbers. Okay, so if I add a one to this number over here, I basically get a one in the most significant bit and then a bunch of zeros. Okay, and I'm going to use this as a simple convention to move from positive numbers to negative numbers, right? So if I look at the most significant bit, that tells me if the number is either positive or zero. And if the most significant bit is a one, that tells me that this is a negative number. And so we know that, you know, half the numbers are going to be positive and half the numbers are going to be negative. Okay, so from here, I then move on to the next number, which is a leading one, a bunch of zeros and a trailing one, and so on. And as I keep enumerating these numbers by adding one to them, I ultimately get the biggest number, which is, you know, all ones. Okay, now I have two options, right? So essentially these are negative numbers and I'm going to write the corresponding negative decimal numbers and I'm going to write them in either increasing or decreasing format. Okay, so I have two options. I can do it this way, where this bottom number is represented as minus one, the next one is minus two, and I keep going up. Or, or down depending on your point of view and ultimately this number then becomes minus 2 to the power 31. Alternatively I could have said that this one is minus 1, this one is minus 2. I could have gone this way and said that this one is minus 2 to the power 31. All right. so which of these options should I should I prefer? Okay I'll, I'm obviously going to prefer the option that makes my math much easier. Okay so let's look at an example of that. So on this next slide, again, in this box, I'm representing whatever you saw here on the slide. Now let's do some math, okay? So let's take the sum of one minus two. Okay, what is one? One is a bunch of zeros followed by a one. And what is minus two? Okay, let's take this representation that I chose over here. Okay, so minus two is essentially a string of ones and finally a zero. Okay, so let's add these two up. So one plus zero is a one, one plus zero is a one, one, and this repeats. And what I end up getting is a string of all ones. Okay, and what is the string of all ones? It's nothing but minus one. And that's indeed correct. When I add one and minus two, I should get a result that is minus one. Okay, if I had chosen the alternative representation that I showed you over here, and I had tried to do the same math, I would have not got the same result. Okay, so clearly, you know, putting minus one down here and going up to the largest negative number upwards is the right convention, is, is the right way to represent these numbers. Okay, and let's just do one more math to confirm that this is indeed true. So let's take the sum of two and minus one. Okay, so two is zero, 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 a whole bunch of zeros, and then a one, zero. All right, and a minus one is a string of ones. Okay, so let's add these two up. One plus zero is a one. One plus one is a zero here. 
with a carry of a 1. So then 1 plus 0 plus 1 is again a 0 here with a carry of 1. And this process keeps on repeating. Right, until you get uh, an extra carry and then a 0 over here. Right, But this most significant bit here is essentially being ignored. Okay, We are doing 32-bit addition in this case. And so I'm just going to ignore whatever comes out as the 33rd bit. So the result is this value here, which ends up being plus 1 okay or you know plus one as shown here right so we know that adding two and minus one should give me the result plus one and that's exactly what I get okay so this is this is not this is not coincidence the reason that this math works out is because this representation that I've shown you over here can be modeled with this equation over here where just as before the first bit times two to the power zero plus the second bit times 2 to the power 1 and I keep doing this until I get to the last bit where my convention actually changes where what I'm adding to the sum is the value of the last bit either a 0 or a 1 multiplied by minus 2 to the power 31 just to confirm for yourself you might want to plug in a few examples from this table up here into this equation and confirm that you do get the right result Okay, and then similarly when I'm doing this math over here, right, let me just go back to this example where I'm adding 2 and minus 1. You'll see at this point, I have a carry of 1. And what I'm trying to do is add this carry to this 1 over here. Okay, so this carry, you know, came about by adding, um, there was the carry over here, so I was basically adding 1 plus 1 here. And that produced a 0 down here and produced, um, or, or a 0 down here, and then produced this carry. So this carry is being is, is coming from an addition down over here. Okay, what it really means is that I had so much to add for the 2 power 30 that I had to move one across to the left. Okay, so I'm essentially producing a carry that has a value 2 to the power 31. And this 1 over here is representing minus 2 to the power 31. Okay, so when I add this guy to this guy over here, I'm basically doing this math. And that should give me a zero, right? And that's how I produce a zero here and do not produce a carry. Okay, so indeed, you know, adding those two numbers, adding two and minus one, gives me the result of plus one. There is really no carry. There is no one in the 33rd bit over here. So you really get the sum, all zeros followed by a one. Okay, so because this equation over here models this binary representation, my math works out and the sum of two numbers with this representation gives me the correct uh, value in both binary and decimal.